consider this problem. What is the square root of 21 minus 8 square root 5? How would you simplify this radical without the use of a calculator? Feel free to pause the video and think about it. The square root of, let's say, 8 squared is 8. In order to simplify this, it needs to be in the right form. So the square root of a plus b squared is going to be a plus b. And the square root of a minus b squared is going to be a minus b. We need to check to see if we have a situation like this in this problem. We do have a minus sign. And a minus b squared is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So we're going to check to see if this is in the form a squared plus b squared minus 2ab, since the minus sign comes after the 21. So here's how you can check it. 8 square root 5 has to equal 2ab. So if b is equal to the square root of 5, that means that 8 has to equal 2a. So if 2a is equal to 8, divide them both by 2, that means a is equal to 4. If a is 4, a squared is 16. And then that means b squared if you square the square root of 5, you're just going to get 5. Notice that a squared plus b squared adds up to 21. 5 plus 16 adds up to 21. Now we know that a squared plus b squared minus 2ab, that's going to be a minus b squared, which all of this simplifies to a minus b. So we know that a is 4, b is the square root of 5. So it's going to be 4 minus the square root of 5. This right here is the answer. And here's how we can check it. Four minus the square root of five squared should equal what's inside of the radical. 21 minus eight square root five. Because if you take the square root of both sides, then four minus the square root of five should equal our original expression. So what we're going to do is we're going to FOIL this expression. We're going to multiply 4 minus the square root of 5 by itself. So 4 times 4, that's 16. And then here we get negative 4 square root 5 and another negative 4 square root 5. And then two negatives will make it positive. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25, which is 5. So combining the first and last terms, we're going to get 16 plus 5, which is 21. And then negative 4 minus 4, that's going to be negative 8. So we do get what's inside of the radical, which means this is indeed the correct answer. Now, for the sake of practice, let's try another one. Go ahead and try this one. Let's say we have the square root of 16 minus 6 square root 7. So go ahead and use the process that we've used earlier to simplify this radical expression. So we're going to see if it's in a form a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. So let's assume that b is equal to the square root of 7. If that's the case, 6 has to equal 2a. If 6 is equal to 2a, 6 divided by 2 gives us a, which is 3. And so that means a squared is going to be 3 squared, which is 9. b squared is going to be the square of the square root of 7, which is 7. And now we need to make sure that a squared plus b squared is equal to 16, which it is, because we can see that 
9 plus 7 is 16. So that tells us that we could use this formula. We have it in the form a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. So this is going to be the square root of a minus b squared, which simplifies to a minus b. So our final answer is just going to be a minus b. a is equal to 3. b is equal to the square root of 7. So all we need to do is simply check this answer, just to make sure we have the right answer. So let's FOIL 3 minus the square root of 7 times itself. So 3 times 3, that's going to be 9. And then we have 3 times the square root of 7. And then multiplying those two will give us the same answer. And then finally, negative root 7 times negative root 7 will simply be positive 7. So combining like terms, we have 9 plus 7 which is 16, and then negative 3 minus 3, that's going to be negative 6, with the square root of 7 attached to it. So as we can see, we get what is inside of the square root symbol, which means this answer is indeed correct for this example problem. Now let's work on one final problem. So this is going to be the square root of 39 plus 12 times the square root of 3. Go ahead and pause the video and uh, work on this problem. So this time we have a, a plus symbol instead of a minus symbol. So we're going to use this formula. a squared plus b squared but plus 2ab. So let's assume that b is equal to the square root of 3. That means that 12 has to equal to 2a. So 12 divided by 2 will give us a, which is equal to 6. So a squared, that's going to be 6 squared, which is 6 times 6. That's equal to 36. And b squared, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that's the square root of 9, which is 3. And so a squared plus b squared, we could see that 36 plus 3 gives us 39. So these numbers fit this formula. So this is going to simplify to the square root of a plus b squared, which will give us the final answer, a plus b. So a is 6, b is the square root of 3. So our final answer should be 6 plus the square root of 3. Now we know the answer is going to be correct, but let's go ahead and make sure. Let's check to see if our work is indeed correct. So we're going to multiply 6 plus the square root of 3 times itself. So first we have 6 times 6, that's 36. And then this is going to be 6 times the square root of 3. And then we're going to get another similar term. And then the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is simply 3. So 36 plus 3, that's going to be 39. And then 6 root 3 plus 6 root 3. That's going to be 12 root 3. And so as we could see, we get our original expression, which means our final answer is indeed 6 plus the square root of 3. So now you know how to simplify a problem that looks like this. So if you ever see that on a test, you might be dealing with a perfect square trinomial inside of the radical symbol. So now you know how to quickly test if these numbers fit a perfect square trinomial. And so you could factor it or rather simplify a certain way. So that's basically it for this video. Hopefully you found it to be educational. And uh, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also click on that notification bell so you can receive uh, future updates on videos that I'm going to be posting soon. 
And also, don't forget to check out the description section below of this video, as I'm going to be posting links to some other videos that contain interesting uh, mathematical topics that you might be interested in. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance.